Good morning all. I am Sriram Sundar, Assistant Professor, Kerr College of Engineering. Today we are going to discuss about CMOS logic design. Why we need CMOS logic? CMOS is basically complementary MOS transistor logic. So we can obtain only complementary Boolean functions with the help of MOS transistors. So the CMOS is designed to overcome the issues faced by both NMOS and PMOS transistors. What are the issues we face by NMOS and, uh, NMOS and uh, PMOS? So it's given below. It's a reduced power consumption. So when we are using both NMOS and PMOS, it consumes more power. But when we, when we combine both NMOS and PMOS transistor to construct CMOS digital circuits, we, we, we can overcome those issues. That is, it can be used to design low power design circuits. And second one is fast switching speed. In the current world, we need to switch the uh, circuits very fast. So when you compare with BJT, the MOS transistors work faster. So at the same time, CMOS faster than both PMOS network and NMOS network. And the third one, high no noise immunity. So most of the digital circuits are uh, favorable for noises. So when you use CMOS circuits, we can reduce the noise as much as possible. So I am going to explain the CMOS uh, logic with the help of an analogy. So here I have given uh, two switches. You can see two switches. So the top switch represents PMOS transistor and the bottom switch represents NMOS transistors. We aware that PMOS transistors switch on for logic 0 and NMOS transistor switch on for logic 1. So obviously both transistors will not on for particular conditions. So here if you take uh, I am giving, uh, I am switch on the PMOS device, if you are giving logic 1 in the sense, so logic 0 in the sense, the PMOS device is switched on and NMOS is switched off. So it cannot create a direct path between VDD to ground. So there is no direct path in the sense, short circuit path is avoided, so it reduces the short circuit power dissipation. At the same time here you can see, when I am giving logic 1, the PMOS transistor is switched on and NMOS is switched off. So which means the output is directly connected with the ground. So this is a simple switch analogy to understand CMOS logic. So here I have given how the CMOS, network, CMOS structure network is built. So here you can see in this diagram you can see PMOS pull up network and NMOS pull up network. So I can give a, a small example. PMOS transistors are always used to construct pull up network and NMOS transistors are used to construct pull down network. Why? So we aware that NMOS transistors can able to produce good zero output and bad one output. As well as PMOS transistor can give good one output and bad zero output. So when we combine PMOS transistor and NMOS transistor in the sense, we can obtain both good zero as well as good one. That is the most important parameter we have to consider for designing CMOS logic. So here, in the diagram you can see all the PMOS transistors will be present in the pull-up network. So here I mentioned PMOS transistor produce good one. So that is why it is connected with the VDD power supply. At the same time, NMOS network is connected with ground. So NMOS is good for zero. So it can produce good zero output at the output logic. So now I am going to explain a yes, basic CMOS inverter. So here you can see, this is a symbol of CMOS inverter. If I am giving input A, it produces output Y. So we know that uh, inverter complements the output. If we give 0, it produces output 1. And if we give 1, it gives output 0. So the structure for CMOS inverter is given here. So in the previous slide, we have discussed about all the PMOS network will be present in the top of the side and NMOS will be present in the bottom of the side. So that is why it is called pull up network and pull down network. So now I am going to explain how the output is changes for the CMOS inverter. So we know that input A either may be 0 or 1. So if it's inverter, 0 input may be converted into 1 and 1 is converted into 0. This is the CMOS inverter truth table. 
So now we can examine how this uh, inverter works. So for example, now I am considering a equal to zero. So a equal to zero. Now we recall we recall p mass zero for on, one for off. Likewise, n mass zero for off and one for on. Now I am giving input zero. So if I give input zero to the PMOS network in the sense zero for on, so this transistor is switched on, and the same zero input is given to the gate terminal of PMOS transistor, so it is switched off. So now we can see that the output terminal Y is directly connected with Y through the PMOS network. So output VDD will be present at the output side. That is logic one. Logic one will be present at the output side. So this is what a CMOS inverter works. At the same time, we can consider the another input combination. So you can consider input A is one. So for PMOS one for off condition. So the PMOS transistor is switched off and the NMOS transistor is switched on. Now we can see that the output is directly connected with ground through the NMOS transistor, which means it is grounded. So the Y output is zero. So in both conditions, we have verified how a CMOS inverter works. Now we have discussed about uh, implementing uh, a simple CMOS inverter. Now we are going to see how to Im implement complex digital circuits with the help of CMOS transistor. CMOS transistor. So for that, I am going to use a simple logic that is called PPP logic. PPP logic. So here the first term is C. PMOS transistors are parallel for product term. If you remember the first term, you can under you can easily write the other terms. PMOS transistors are parallel for product terms. So at the same time, PMOS transistors are series for some term, and NMOS transistors are series for product term. It's a ulta. And NMOS transistors are parallel for some term. If you remember these four principles, that is a triple P logic, you can simply write all the four terms. So I uh, recall the, those things. PMOS transistors are parallel for product term, and PMOS transistors series for some term. NMOS transistor series for product term, NMOS transistors parallel for some term. With the help of this logic only, we are going to design uh, CMOS digital circuits. So here I have taken a simple two input NAND gate. So we know, we know that uh, two input NAND gate receives two input and produces output one output. So here I have taken a logic expression for the NAND gate. There is y equal to a dot b the whole bar. So earlier I told uh, CMOS can implement only complementary logic. So that is why I have taken the NAND gate expression because it have a complementary function here. So similarly we can implement NOR logic, XNOR logic. So when the complementary function is present, we can directly imp implement CMOS logic. So here I have given the truth table for the NAND gate. So the inputs are A and B and uh, the conditions for pull down network and pull up network and how the output is varies. So I told that pull up PMOS transistor will act as a uh, pull up network and NMOS transistor will act as pull down network. So when the inputs are 0, 0, the output is 1, 0, 1, the output is 1. This is what uh, we discussed in uh, digital principles. So now I show the circuit implementation of CMOS NAND gate. So I told triple P logic that is P, for product terms PMOS transistors are in parallel. So here you can see here you can see A dot B is a product term. So product term in the sense PMOS transistors should be in parallel. So that is why these two transistors two transistors which receives A and B inputs are in parallel. At the same time for the product terms NMOS transistors should be in series. So that is why 
the two uh, transistors which receives A and B inputs are present in series. So we can take the output from the drain terminals of both pull up network and pull down network that is Y and uh, pull, pull up network source terminals are connected with VDD and pull down network source is connected with ground. So in this way we can implement CMOS networks. So uh, I recall the topic through another example. Here I have taken uh, a 3 input NAND gate. In the 3 input NAND gate it receives 3 inputs that is A dot B dot C whole bar. So as per the triple P logic it's a product term. It's a product term. So PMOS transistor should be in parallel. So 1, 2, 3 both all the 3 transistors will be in parallel. For NMOS combination it should, it should be in series. So the transistor A, transistor B and transistor C are in series. We can, we can take the output from the drain terminals of both network that is output Y. So now we can, we can uh, check the output of uh, the circuit. So uh, here the input combination is 0, 0. If 0, 0, PMOS is switched on and NMOS is switched off. NMOS is switched off. Now we can see that it created two parallel paths with VDD2 output Y. So the output terminal directly connected with VDD. So it produced logic 1. So here it is logic 1. Now I take that another example 1 0. A is 1 and B is 0. A is 1, so which 1 in the sense PMOS transistor is switched off and 0 it is switched on. Likewise, here 1 0 combination A is switched on and B is switched off for NMOS transistor. Now, in the parallel combination, one of the transistors is switched on, so which means still it can create a direct path to output Y. But the two NMOS transistors are in parallel, so here the switch is open, the switch is open, so it, the output may not directly connect with ground. So it still it produces output 1 for the combination 1, 0. Now we take the last combination 1, 1. So both the inputs are logic 1, both inputs are logic 1, so which means the both PMOS transistors are switched off, both PMOS transistors are switched off and both NMOS transistors are switched on for logic 1 combination. So here, both trans PMOS transistors are switched off, so output no more connect with VDD. At the same time, the two NMOS transistors are connected with ground through output Y. So the output Y is directly connected with ground, so it produces logic 0. In this way, we can verify the output of the implemented logic gate for CMOS logic. So here I have taken uh, the two input NAR gate uh, logic structure. So again you use a triple P logic, triple P. So PMOS transistor product for product terms are in parallel. So here it is sum symbol. So basically it's a sum term. So PMOS transistor should be in series. So that is why the both A and B transistors are in series. By using triple P logic, we can easily understand the PMOS transistors should be series for some term and NMOS transistors should be in parallel. Parallel. So from the drain terminal, we can take the output Y. So now we can take one of the input combinations from the truth table. Stop. Mm, stop. 